Hey there, friends. Nibs again. Out here in the garage, doing a little bit of goofing around this afternoon. Uh, it was a nice day out earlier, uh, but I was outside doing some lawn work and getting things buttoned up for winter. It's actually been really warm. Uh, it was in the mid 70s today, and uh, but as I was getting done doing my yard work, it started raining. So no uh, no range trip for me today, but that's all right. I wanted to uh, get out and do a, a couple of videos out in the garage here anyway. Uh, I've got one here, brand new gun, uh, on loan to the channel right now, and uh, you guys have seen this one before. Um, <clears throat> it's a Crossman Model 2100 Classic, and uh, this particular one is one of two that was sent to me by Denny the Flat Broke Air Gunner, and it was donated by Utah Air Guns, and... Uh, uh, these were given uh, over to a couple of young guys I know in my church and uh, one of them let me uh, borrow it back and we're going to be doing a little bit of a review on it. Um, if you guys watch this channel at all you really know I love these Crossman pump up guns and uh, <clears throat> let me go ahead and get this out. This particular one so this model this the way that this is configured uh, they've been making this type of rifle since I think the 70s um, I do have a couple of uh, older ones over here I'll show you guys uh, this one here is my model 766 and I believe this one is from the 80s very very uh, similar gun to this one uh, almost almost identical I'm not sure exactly what other than styling of the of the stock what is different on it the feeding mechanism and all that are are identical the, <clears throat> and then the other one I have here is actually a, a Remington uh, licensed gun Remington Air Master model 77 and it is also an older one but this one is a rebranded Crossman Model 1000 which they actually came back out with the Model 1000 and again I don't know what the difference is between the 2100 and the 766 and the 1000 but they have uh, different model numbers for all of them so there's obviously got to be something something different but um, I really like it it has a, a, a cast aluminum receiver housing uh, unlike the uh, 760s which they really cheaped out on now that I mean the, it actually has a little bit of rifle weight almost feels like a, a 22 kind of weight um, it does have a magazine on the side here that you could load BBs in them I, honestly uh, this is a rifled barrel and I would hesitate to unless you absolutely had to you know kill something and all you had was BBs uh, I would not use BBs in a rifled barrel <laughs> just my just my personal opinion good bad or otherwise but uh, steel on steel it's going to cause wear lead on steel uh, your barrel will last forever so just take that with a grain of salt um, <clears throat> so I did do some uh, testing on this beforehand just to kind of get an idea of where it stood uh, according to the box uh, it says that it has uh, velocity readings for 2, 6, and 12 pump uh, shots so I did a chronograph test with only 2, 6, and 12 I'll put that up here now um, two pumps it says it should be doing 400 feet per second I wrote them down over here so I don't get them wrong so at two pumps I saw uh, 405 feet per second then I went up to six pumps which is all, number two shot here and uh, the box says it should be up to 600 feet per second and I was actually seeing 639 feet per second which both of those shots are more than it was actually estimated for now usually those readings are you know using the lightest possible four grain five grain pellets that you could find 
um, and I was shooting seven green Meisterkugens with those and uh, seeing those kind of velocities. Now I did pump it up to 12 pumps and it does say it should go up to 12 up to 800 feet per second with 12 pumps which I was a little skeptical about but again with the Meisterkugens um, I saw 692 so that's still a pretty good velocity it's not quite as much as they called for but uh, I don't have any really light pellets here in the garage right now so we'll have to stick with the seven green and uh, take it for what it's worth but uh, it does have uh, stickers on it that Denny put on there from Utah Air Guns and his channel the Flat Broke Air Gunner Go out and check out Denny he's a cool guy <laughs> he's a lot of fun his channel's a lot of fun too but uh, I really appreciate uh, all the things that he does for uh, air gunning and gun uh, shooting in general uh, really promoting the sport and uh, these guys that uh, we got these things to are having a lot of fun with them so but uh, I also did a couple of uh, trigger pull tests with it and with my Lyman really like this Lyman digital trigger gauge I wish I had gotten one a long time ago but um, that's a great tool uh, but what I've come up with with that was uh, on a five pole average I uh, averaged 3.3 3 pounds 8 ounces. Let me see. I, yeah, th 3 pounds 8.2 ounces. I took a picture of it. I'll put it up here. And uh, uh, that's not bad for just an entry level plinking gun like this guy is. But uh, normally, if this was my gun, I'd stick a scope on here to do some target practice with. But it's not mine so we'll go ahead and uh, shoot it with the open sights and uh, I was shooting it beforehand and got them all in the ten ring on my shooting seas. Uh, one other thing here it has a really nice uh, fiber optic front sight so that really helps with uh, for me to get a good sight picture on it. Um, I can stick that that yellow dot in the groove of this rear sight and and really get a good sight picture real fast too. So, um, let's go ahead and shoot. Uh, I'm going to do five shots with these Meisterkugens and we'll see what we can do. Uh, again, you know, we're not, no heavy lifting here. This is just 20 feet across the garage, but uh, um, <laughs> probably only need to do two pumps. It's doing over 400 feet per second just with two pumps but uh, I might have to get me one of these <laughs> just to go with the with the rest of the crowd here but they, those shoot just as good as this thing does so probably no need to Same hole. Ooh, got that one off just a little to the left of the first two, but still a nice looking little group there. Pellet didn't want to go in the hole. Oh, that was me. I was bobbling around. pumping effort is a little bit stiffer on this than say like the 760s but it does have a lot more power too so uh, well they're making one big ragged hole except for that one that I you know definitely flinched up high myself I'm going to do another group just to you know what, I'm going to I'm going to try a different pellet here I've got uh, 
I, th I say they're different, but I believe they're ex exactly the same. These are these uh, Gecko uh, Dynamit Nobles. They weigh the same as the Meister Coogans, look exactly the same as the Meister Coogans. Let's see if they shoot exactly the same. I'm going to shoot at the, if you look on the target, on the right hand side, there's a number uh, in the outer ring. I'm going to shoot at that number. Just to That'll be my point of aim. It's not, it's not a bad trigger at all. It's it's got a little bit of creep on it, but uh, for for a gun that usually retails around a hundred or less, it's it's a fantastic shooting little gun. Nice looking group. So the cocking effort isn't quite as stiff as, uh, say, like my Benjamin 397. Boy, that thing is it takes a real man to pump that guy up. But it's it's definitely in between the 397 and the 760 as far as a pumping effort goes. Yeah, nothing wrong with that group at all. <laughs> Great little shooting gun. It, it, probably any any deviation from a one-hole group is strictly blaming on my eyes and not the gun. <clears throat> but uh, it's definitely a uh, handsome gun. When I was a when I was a kid, I got a gun like this from my grandfather. One of the one of those 760s. It was miss or 766s. It was actually missing the buttstock. All it had was the receiver. And so we had to shoot it like, like this with no, <laughs> but uh, it was, that was a shooting gun. He actually had it uh, tuned up because he had chickens and ducks in the city and he couldn't uh, dispatch them with a, with a rifle. So he needed an air gun to uh, dispatch those, uh, those birds. But so he had that 766 uh, tuned up uh, and it was very powerful. Uh, I wish I could have found a stock for it. I'm not sure whatever happened to the stock that it had, uh, or, or maybe he never had it when he got it. I, don't, I really don't know. But <laughs> anyway, enough rambling. But there's my uh, review on the Crossman Model 2100 Classic. Very cool gun. Uh, these are these are pretty awesome. If you can get your hands on one of these, uh, they're still available at retail. Uh, they also have the Classic 1000, which uh, I believe is the same gun. I really have no idea what the difference is, but uh, you can't go wrong with either one of them. So anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. You'll be notified when I do post up new videos. Um, the Crossman products are available on Amazon. And if you look in my link down below, uh, you'll see my Amazon storefront link and you can buy I didn't find the 2100s on there, but I did find the Ameri uh, uh, Model 1000 Classics on there, along with the 760s and just about anything else that uh, Crossman makes. But uh, I'm not sure why the 2100s aren't on there right now, but uh, that'll probably come back pretty soon. So anyway, till next time, have a great day.